Hey guys, today we're going to be making an isometric turnstile animation using Rhino and Premiere Pro. Let's go. The first thing we're going to want to do is get a center point for the turntable animation to rotate around. So the way I'm going to do that is just get a point in the center of this base circle. I'll just quickly put a midline and then a point. And then the second step is to center your viewport on the center point of the model so that it rotates cleanly from the center and doesn't rotate asymmetrically. So to do that I'm just going to hide this and then what you do is you right click on the perspective header and you go to zoom, zoom target and you want to place this zoom target at that center point we created earlier and then what it will do is drag a window this window will be the new zoom of the window so you can make that as big as you want it doesn't matter we're going to crop it later so I'll just make it about that big. So I'm just going to show the object that I had hidden. Now step number three is we're going to want to set this viewport to isometric. So again you right click on the viewport header and you go to set view isometric. You can choose any one of these orientations just have a play around until you get one that is that orientation that you like. Again it doesn't matter because it's going to be rotating back to this position anyway. So now you've done that, a helpful hint is you might want to go over here to the right hand side of the Rhino interface and go to the named views. Now if yours doesn't have a named views, you click on the cog here and it will be down in here and you just tick it to get it to show up. So, and then just save this view, save it as whatever you want, isometric, that's just so we can come back to that view layout and configuration whenever we want. So say we've just changed it, now we're back. Now what you want to do is just test that your animation is working correctly. So what you can do is just type in turntable, that's the command, and it will just spin the model around at the center point of the viewport. So as you can see, this base circle is staying in the exact same position, it's just rotating, and that's exactly what we want, so now we can move on. Step number four, what you want to do is just go to animation setup in the heading bar here. Now if you don't have that, you want to do is go into the animation setup toolbar. Now if you, you can't see that toolbar, you can just right click in the toolbar, go show or hide tabs and select animation, animation preview and animation setup to make sure they're showing. Now what you want to do in the animation setup is select the turntable animation. Now these are the settings that it will show you. I just chose 300 frames, you're welcome to experiment with that. Direction, you can choose whatever you like, file type. Now this you want to select as PNG if you don't want to see a background. Capture method, this is the most important one. What this does is choose the viewport display setting that it will render the animation in. So if you just want it to be wireframe, shaded or ghosted or any other custom one, this is where you select it. We're going to leave it as rendered viewport. Uh, make sure the viewport is the correct one selected as isometric and you can also give it a name. So I'll just choose it as ISO animation. Now step six, what you want to do is preview the animation. So you can go animation preview and select the play button. And this will show you what your animation will look like. As you can see, the background is transparent. What you can do to set that up is right click on the viewport header and select display options. Now in this window, you can change the settings. And what I would do is change the rendered view settings. And we want the background to be changed to transparent. Now you can have that as a solid color, an image or whatever you like, but transparent is going to be better for compositing at the end. So just select OK. The final step is to run the animation. Now what you can do is just go to the animation toolbar and click record animation. And as you can see in the toolbar, it will give you the option to select a target folder and to run the animation. So what you do is just click enter. And once you've clicked enter, it will just run through the animation and render out all the frames to the selected file. So the second main part to making the animation is exporting those frames or individual images into a video program to turn them into an animation. Now I'm going to be using Premiere Pro, so what you do, so you just start a new project, give it a title, give it a save location, and these settings I'm just going to leave as they are. Now we're in Premiere Pro to import the frames that you've just rendered. Just go File, Import, and navigate to the frame 1 and tick Image Sequence. That will open them as a sequence. Now that's in the source part of Premiere Pro. Drag that into the timeline. 
and as you can see you can push play and you've got your video. If you would like to recolor the animation into something stylized or duotone or maybe monotone, what you can do is go into the effects tab. On the right hand side go into video effects, color correction and tint. Double click will get added to the effect control pane and then you can change these settings to map black which is the shadows and white which is everything else to different colors. I'm just going to have a play around and pick something that I like. So now that we've recolored this you might want to add in a background that's a similar color to the lighter of your two colors. So if you would like to do that what you can do is go up here into the color of the map white to copy this color code go back to the editing view go into the project panel click on the new item new color mat leave these settings as it is so it's the same height as the output video and then just paste that code into the into the option and leave the mat as background place that in and what you might want to do that is drag that into the composition and you can set that into the video layer below the animation layer otherwise it'll just block it out so you might need to move your animation up and if you need to edit the color you can just double click on it you might want to make it a bit lighter now as you can see we've added a background it's just important to make sure that the background extends for the same length as the video and now we're done so if you like to crop this video edit add any other effects go ahead and now you just want to export it out so you just want to go file export media It'll take you into the export settings, leave all the H.264 and the high bit rate, export audio. You can untick that because we don't want audio. You're welcome to fiddle with these settings or go change them, but otherwise I'm just going to export that. Now that that's been exported, you can see that it's playing. And that's it.